Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2021 Players Championship. First look, stats, research, the modeling. We're going to get you set throughout the week because we had a ton of content coming. Monday, me and Feinberg breaking down the bets. Tuesday, me, Rick Gaiman, Ben Raza breaking down the entire DraftKings slate. Live chat on Wednesday. Post round for round two showdown on Thursday evening. Live cut sweat show on Friday. Jam pack content week on the Pat Mayo experience. Plus, we're going to have football mixed into that mix too because free agency has started. Jeff Ratcliffe from FTN Network will be joining me. Also of SiriusXM Plus, if you miss me, Cuss, and Jeff yelling at each other about the best quarterbacks in football from last week, those shows are still up. They're not going anywhere. Highly suggest you go check those out. So here's what I need you to do. Smash the like button to the episode. Give me your favorite Sleeper heading into the week, your first thought sleeper, a guy you're like, oh yeah, he's going to play well at Sawgrass this week. That's what I want to hear about in the comment section, okay? Plus some giveaways for you out there, but I need you to help me out just a little bit. So in the description, you can find a brand new show launching on Mayo Media Network. It is called SEO Very Viable Fantasy Sports Picks, or sorry, Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets, The Mix. We have awesome hosts. It's going to be every day short form content so you don't need to listen to an hour and a half of people yelling at each other about baseball we're gonna try to keep them 10 to 20 minutes every single day the info you need the picks of the day the DraftKings picks and the bets all hammered into one they should be out by the time that you wake up in the morning so if you want to have a coffee you're driving to work you take transit boom you can knock it out super easy if you're a fan of baseball even if you're not a fan of baseball please go to apple podcast and subscribe to that podcast right now if you leave a five-star rating and review and leave your twitter handle or your email address in that review just say something nice like hey pumped about a new show for mayo media network that easy hey i love baseball i hear garyan's gonna be on it's gonna be great uh so if you do that you're in a draw for a hundred bucks and if you win i will send you a hundred dollars so please get those ratings and reviews up tell people about the fantasy baseball picks and bets. Uh, We're super excited about the show. Uh, I think that everyone is going to like it. Also, do you like betting on golf? Who doesn't? Do you like playing DraftKings golf? Who doesn't? You're watching the show. Obviously, you do. FantasyNational.com right now for all the stats, all of the tools. That's what I'll be doing my walkthrough with today. But... There's a little trick that you can pull off. If you get the monthly membership to FantasyNational.com starting today, it will bring you all the way through the Masters. So you get the players, all the tournaments in between, and the lead up to the Masters. You don't get the weekend of the Masters, but who cares about that? Because the tournament has already started. You want to do the research. You want to build your lineups. You'll have the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for the Masters if you get the monthly starting today. And if you go to FantasyNational.com slash Mayo, you get 20% off. So you get five tournaments for the price of four, and you get the players and masters, both of which have millionaire makers hanging over them. So if there's ever a time to become a member at FantasyNational.com right now, it's right now. FantasyNational.com slash Mayo to get yourself 20% off. All right. I think I paid the bills long enough on this one. Thanks for sticking with me through all that. It just as much as you can help us out with this to launch this baseball show, it would be greatly appreciated, by the way. And for all the content that we're putting on, the free content that's out there. Players Championship, TPC Sawgrass, I think most of you know it well. It's a par 72. The par 5 is pretty easy. You have that one drivable par 4, which we'll see how that goes. If they shave down the grass even more to make it a bit more risk instead of just ultra reward. But the main thing that you want to look at if you look at the winners here over the past years is strokes gained approach. Uh, Not shocking that that would pop up. It's Pete Dye course uh, as well as anything else. But when you look at the past winners at the players championship over time so if we just take a look just at strokes gained approach rory won with six and a half strokes gained on approach in 2019 he was sixth in the field the one big outlier is actually webb simpson who lost strokes on approach he was 92nd in the field that week but the guy couldn't miss a putt like it was ridiculous and he was running away with it and 
he, not only was he putting everything on the greens, and he was putting stuff from off the greens in. So his strokes gained around the green looked really good. That is something to take into consideration at this course as well. I mean, Webb is just a great around the green player anyway, but a lot of his off the green work was actually him putting with all of the shaved surfaces just off in the putting complexes. And Martin Keimer won here as well. Basically, anywhere where Martin Keimer has a win, it's with shaved putting complexes where he can putt from off the green pinehurst yeah it's exactly the same way so he has a terrible short game he can't get it up and down i mean maybe he, he's an older man now maybe he's on the pills i don't know I maybe mean, get it up i don't know if he can get it back down if he can't he got to call his doctor but if he can putt from off the green yeah it's kind of money and we saw that play itself out that year in particular 2014 the site of the second biggest gambling win i've ever had you should know that this tournament either i win a lot of money or i get so fucking wiped out it's embarrassing which is nothing new for me. It would be embarrassing for most people. For me, that's like a semi-regular occurrence. But hitting Keimer at 80 to 1 was very nice that year. That was the first year I worked with Jeff at Fantasy. And we were just like, ha, all the monies are coming our way. It's fantastic. So Webb was 92nd in the field. The other big win that I had here was 2017 with C. Woo! Kim, shout out, Adonis, add on. 7x on twitter who was the one who got me on him then i use fantasy national and be like oh the guy hasn't made a putt all week and he's destroying ball striking you should probably hop onto him i didn't get the 500 to 1 pre-tournament like adonis did but you know i got to jump in 200 to 1 still a pretty nice win but he gained 4.1 strokes on approach that week 16th in the field day was ninth in the field fowler was third Keimer was fourth tiger was second kuchar was 15th that's dating back to 2012 obviously the tournament got postponed or sorry canceled after one round a year ago so that's just a quick glance into what is going on no one's ever repeated as a winner of the players championship first timers tend to not necessarily not necessarily do poorly but just they don't really win all that often so it's been a long time since a first time First timer is one. And if you're looking at Pete Dye courses overall, uh, you can use the Pete Dye filter to make this very easy on yourself on fantasynational.com. We'll do that here in a little bit. But um, the Pete Dye courses on the PGA Tour, Sawgrass, uh, Harbor Town for the Heritage, TPC River Highlands for the Travelers Championship, TPC Louisiana, which is now the team event for the Zurich Classic, Austin Country Club, where they have the match play, uh, the TPC Stadium course at La Quinta uh, for the Career Builder. Now the American Express. Three of the rounds were there this year. Siwoo won there. Siwoo has won this tournament. He has come second at the Heritage. He's a Pete Dye player. We'll we'll try to sniff out some more Pete Dye players moving forward. Crooked Stick, Whistling Straits, and Kiowa Island, which was the site of the 2012 PGA Championship, where Rory won and will be the site of the PGA Championship this year as well. If you're trying to project forward just a little bit, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, this tournament's stupid, um, just by and large. It's fun to watch, because and they're going to have cameras at every single hole, which sounds fucking awesome. But there's you think that, like, Honda, which is coming up next week now, has a ton of water and really throws things out of whack, or even Bay Hill, uh, a ton of water, and, like, guys can make huge numbers because you end up in the water and, like, oh, geez, I, what, what even happened here? And we saw it at the concession a few weeks back that water played such a major factor it's going to play even more of a factor this week. It's kind of ridiculous. There are 17 water hazards at TPC Sawgrass. So guys eject all the time. The more uncomfortable you can make your lineups and basically you don't like them this week, probably the better off they're going to do. Just even just take this as an example. So two years ago, the top six DraftKings scores of all of them, that was the year that Rory won. So obviously he was in the high range. Four of those six were $7,100 and below on DraftKings. You had Furyk, Johnny Vegas, Brant Snedeker, and Eddie Pepperell, all $7,100 and below. The year before that, uh, each of the top seven DraftKings scores were priced at $7,300 and below. Obviously, Webb Simpson was one of those, but this is a week where you can leave a ton on the table. You can take goofy guys you would just never even consider, um, and just because you have a hunch on them, that tends to be good enough for TPC Sox. Grass, to tell you the truth uh just guys can get like i was it last time they played it wasn't last year i think it was the webb simpson win year a lot of us were on paul casey maybe it was last year and he ended up taking like a nine on the number 17 like you have one bad hole you're done you're absolutely cooked there is no coming back from that just because it's so impactful on your score that one bad score because you can go out and post a oh, just look at the past winners rory minus 16 webb minus 18 see boo minus 10, Jason Day, minus 15, Fowler, minus 12, Keimer, minus 13, Woods, minus 13. Like, you're going to need to shoot, you know, in your 
69, 68, you had that one round where you shoot the 65 to, you know, counter, you go into the water once or twice to counter the 73 that you're bound to put up, but it's 7,200, it's less than 7,200 yards, 7,189 yards uh, on Bermuda grass green. So it's a really random tournament is really what I'm trying to get at. So we can do all the stats research that we want and we can find some sleepers that way, most definitely. But sometimes at this tournament, you just kind of have to play a hunch. Almost like if you went with Lee Westwood at Bay Hill, you're like, hey, geez, Lee Westwood. What would ever put me on to him? The answer would be nothing besides the fact that, like, oh, I like Lee, Lee, Lee Westwood. I like Lee Westwood. I'm going to play him would be basically the only thing that you can kind of go through with that. But let's jump over to FantasyNational.com. Again, FantasyNational.com slash Mayo to get yourself 20% off. And if you get the monthly right now, you get the players through the Masters, at least the lead up to the Masters, so you can generate your lineups. Here's what we're looking at for the Players' Championship. We're going to break down the pricing and everything like that. Uh, on Tuesday show with Rick and Ben. So I don't want to get too much into it. I did an early look show with Ben last week where we gave out Connors at 175 to one, probably should have just bet him at Bay Hill, but you know, I, I'm recording this before the fourth round at the Arnold Palmer Invitational where Connors is still one off the lead. But um, I doubt that he's going to be 175 to one after the week, regardless of what the outcome is going to be. So if we just kind of just scroll through everything, let's take a look at the past course conditions. The Greens played medium firmness after playing firm uh, each of the past two years before that, soft, then medium. So it kind of depends on the weather. Uh, the early weather reports, you know, it got kind of wet, but it's going to be nice, it looks like, all week. But I'm looking that on a Saturday evening. Uh, it's probably best to check that on, you know, a Wednesday evening to see how everything is turning out, to see if there's any splits, weather, anything like that in the conditions. Moderate win for three of the four rounds last year, only one of the four rounds. 2017 was the last time it kind of got up there and really kind of played difficult. That was the C woo year when it came down to everything. Uh, scoring relative to power really rarely gets difficult. It was in 2017 because the wind stayed up the entire time. You know, fast to lightning type speeds on the greens, uh, Bermuda grass, uh, there's barely, you know, there's not much rough. They grew it up a little bit last year, but it's nothing so impactful. The water is far more impactful when we're really breaking this down. So let's take a look at the course breakdown overall. And you're going to see, let's see if there's a showdown preference here. So you got 14, 8, and 16. That might actually be the way to kind of go into it, because if you start on number 10, you get a pretty good runway with it, but you have to birdie 10. It feels like you have more chances to make a birdie streak, I suppose. Or does it? Let's see. You can get one off the gate. You can get one going in on the wraparound. Feels like just having nine to play gives you an extra shot because there's almost a 30% birdie rate on that hole. And then if you get to number 10, if you can squeeze one out there, then you have two pretty decent birdie holes there as well. And if you play number nine, starting on hole one instead of starting on hole 10, uh, you do get number nine to mix in. So you go 9, 10, 11, or 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, 13, which are available to the guys that start on the number 10 hole as well. But it just just having that extra one of number nine is much better than you know 18, which is the hardest hole on the course, that you don't get that potential wraparound from the players teeing off on the back nine to start their rounds. As I mentioned, strokes gained approach. That's how it's reflected in the top 10 finishers, more than double off the tee, uh, almost three times around the green, and even more than putting. When it comes down to it, if we look at top five, even more, uh, a little bit less pronounced. Guys are a little bit better off the tee, just better overall. Putting actually means a little bit less than the top 10 finishers, but it means a little bit more on that. And then if we look at strokes gained approach for the winners, it's up there. How about just cut makers? Maybe we'll see how that goes. And again, it's a lot less on strokes gained approach because obviously it's just players who make the cut. And it's the same cut rules as always. Top 65 and ties end up making the cut line. Um, but there's a closer, it's closer between off the tee and approach uh, instead of being like it's just over half. So just ball striking in general is what we're going to be hammering in on. But strokes gained approach more than anything. Par fours, where you're going to do your damage, obviously. Um, you, ha you have to make birdies on the par fives. Don't give them up on the par threes. Make your birdies on the par fours. That's where you're going to end up winning. But the big thing here is you have four, five par fours, sorry, 450 to 500 yards. For a course, that's not all that long. You see, it's not really made up that much in the par of fives, there's three of them less than 550 yards. Then you have like the dinky par three, uh, and they have three pretty short par threes, um, you know, by the standards that we've seen the past few weeks. So 
it is telling us that these long par fours are, if you can you know, make your birdies there, then you're going to be pretty good to go. Let's see hole number 12. What's the eagle rate up there now? That's still pretty low. You'd think it'd be higher because it can you can drive it, but it's just kind of tough. Uh, 2019, even cut line, even cut line in 2018. Played harder, obviously, in 2017. Plus three, minus one. So it's been plus one, minus one, or even in nine of the past 10 years. So look at it for there. Driving accuracy is just around tour average. Greens and regulation percentage, slightly below tour average. Scrambling, slightly below tour average. But the scrambling percentage is obviously going to take a knock because guys go in the water and they're just scrambling from there. And it's really difficult to make par from that standpoint. Force layups because it's a Pete Dye course. So 278 is going to be your average driving distance this week versus two. 82 at your average tour event uh so you can go bombs away on some of these holes but this is why the shorter hitters can still not necessarily have an advantage but their lack of distance off the tee is mitigated versus what we see at some of the longer courses on the pga tour so it's not just bombers that are going to have the chance to compete this week dj is the favorite he's 10 or 11,200. he's the betting favorite as well progressively better t69 t28 t12 t17 t5 uh, has never won this event so you, you he had just spent so long trying to win the masters that you know he finally ended up getting over the hump so maybe he can do that this time around as well john rom rory mcelroy xander shoffley who did miss, he has a t2 and a miscut at this event in his career and brooks who's just never been great here but obviously he's he's playing pretty well right now and l- just look at the very top end of the board rory has the one win webb simpson has the one win of guys 9500 and above and then you have what one two three four other top fives out of the past five years from any of these guys so again it's a complete crapshoot Hovland and Morikawa haven't played uh Cantley is probably my pick to win uh, I like him this week but even his track record is two top 25s and a missed cut uh maybe we can find we can just see oh Sing Zhu Zhang is playing my guy uh Matthew Wolf withdrew from this event uh, due to injury so he is not going to be in the field this time around Strokes gained total overall the past five years. And you can see Patton Kazire has lost the most. Adam Scott, Rory McIlroy, Jason Day, Hideki Matsuyama, and Webb Simpson are your best. Of those players, Adam Scott and Webb Simpson have not missed a cut over those five years. Neither have DJ, JT, Ian Poulter, Tommy Fleetwood, Siwoo Kim, Sergio Garcia, and I guess Rory Sabatini has not either, although he's only played three of the past five times, This and same as Cameron Tring. Cameron Tringali is super interesting, actually. Now that he's in such good form, playing so well, uh, he hasn't qualified for the Players' Championship uh, the past two times it's been played, but made the cut in each of the past three times before that. Interesting. Put a star next to your name, Cameron Tringali, $7,200. I don't think that's going to be shocking to anyone. Uh, people like playing Cameron Tringali. He continues to come through for everyone, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that this could happen. I like Answer this week, too. Uh, just touching on Answer just a little bit. This right here. Look at look at these approach numbers. Now, they're not great, mind you, but 1, 1. 1.7, 3.6, 1.5, 1.5. So he's gained in every tournament so far this year with his approaches. The putting has been horrendous, but you know that's okay from time to time. The driving, especially at a course like this where he doesn't have a bunch of distance, should help him out a lot. And when was the last time he played a Pete Dye course? Oh, he was fifth at the American Express. Interesting, Abraham answer. What are your betting odds, Abe answer? He 80 to 1. I actually thought they'd be more than that, but maybe we'll get a better number because he didn't play the Arnold Palmer Invitational. But still, I like Abraham answer this week. How did he putt in his one event? Yeah. So here's at the 2019 players, he tied for 12th in his first start. It was great off the tee, great on approach, made a few putts, you know, chipped okay. Uh, I'd like to see him make more putts uh, than just gaining 0.8 strokes over four rounds. You get that up to like two strokes gained on the field and just have one of these outlier weeks in ball striking, he's going to be good to go. So Abraham answers $7,500. You know, he's one of the first names that jumps out to me. Uh, looking through it so far, so let's put a star next to Abraham answers name. Molinari. So there's two guys. 
in particular. One we can look at with Louis, who withdrew before the tournament started. Uh, I think that Louis probably a really good play this week. Uh, you doubt that if he's going to be in the field and he's going to tee it up, that he's probably not going to withdraw again, especially at a tournament which is you know prestigious, but just comes along with a lot of money when it comes down to it. So Louis is a target for me. People will be off him DraftKings wise because you know no one wants to deal with Louis after what happened last week. Uh, how has Louis played here? He's been T fifty six cut T two. Uh, he just feels like he's going to be a really good leverage play at seventy eight hundred dollars people will go just in a different direction than him has bryson played at this t20 t37 so bryson's also never missed a cut in two starts at this event as well just louis on DraftKings. you know i i really have no idea how he's going to play but it seems to me like if you can get like a three percent louis at that price then all of a sudden we're in a different situation than what was going to happen with him, you know, priced up and kind of popular at over 10% ownership that I, I think that's a pretty decent pivot play. And you don't need to play much of him if you want to get some exposure. Justin Rose also withdrew. Uh, obviously, he took the nine on hole three, playing with Spieth on Saturday at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, put three in the water, finished the hole and said, fuck this, I'm out of here. I'm going to go shoot a MasterCard commercial and make a million bucks. But I don't know where that leaves him. Apparently, it's a back tweak. I don't even know if he's going to play at this point. There's been no announcement on it. Uh, probably a fade, just straight up. Uh, I liked him coming into the week, but you, know, you can't win them all. Cam Smith, uh, super interesting as well. It was really just one round in Mexico, or not in Mexico, at, at the WGC uh, workday that sunk him, like that minus 3.2 strokes gained off the tee. Uh, I assume he was like minus five in that one round. Let's just go take a look here if we just go his round by round stats. In the other rounds, he was incredible. He's been incredible seven of his past eight rounds. He had one bad round, round three, and he was god awful. It happens, especially at a course with so much water. But even if you look at his strokes gained off the tee numbers, gain 1.2. He's never going to be a great off the tee player, but he can make a few putts from time to time, unless it's the final round of the fucking Genesis when I have money on him. But the strokes gained approach, still looking really good. The short game is always going to be excellent for him. He's great around the greens, by and large. Uh, I mean, he hasn't been four of his past five rounds, but historically, he's just a very good player around the greens when we look at it. And Ozzy, he's young. Um, let's see what his course history is. How are we looking at this? Players Championship. Uh, not great. Not great, Bob. 56, miscut, miscut. Feel like he might be a bit of a different player this time around. He's going to be on the tentative watch list for this week. Uh, Corey Connors, regardless of how he finishes, I think at $7,400, is going to be one of the most popular plays in the field. I can get behind that. Uh, I think that Corey Connors is a really nice play at this venue. But he is a player. He, he's not going to hit in the water a ton, which is always really nice. He has a very good driving accuracy percentage. We know how good he is with the irons. I think that him and Answer are actually pretty comparable, although I trust Answer to make a few more putts than Corey Connors, who's having a nice putting week, actually, at Bay Hill, which could he have two in a row? That seems impossible, knowing it's Corey Connors. However, Answer at, like, one-third the ownership of Corey Connors, being a relatively similar player, just... Give me the guy with the lower, the lower percentage, uh, the lower percentage ownership on DraftKings. If we're going to come down to it, I don't know if I'm going to eat the chalk on him yet. Morikawa, I feel like this is a perfect course for him. Strangely enough, uh, I don't feel like Augusta is. I know everyone's glomming on to him for Augusta, but we've seen Morikawa just continue to be fire. And if irons truly are the thing that we want, that is the most important at this course, he's the guy. Uh, over the past 50 rounds, you can see right here, he's third. Dustin is first. Who's second? Russell Henley is second. This could be a Russell Henley course, now that I think about it. How has Russell Henley been playing? I feel like he's been terrible recently. He just hasn't been playing. Uh, Genesis, I don't know. The approaches were good. You know what? Russell Henley. What's the Russ bus? Russell Henley. Is he at a site at a mine? 100 to 1. Okay, okay. We're starting to figure this out a little bit. I'm going to throw Russell Henley onto it. Although I bet you if we shrink this down to past 24 rounds, Russell Henley, not so hot uh, inside the top five in approaches would be my guess, but crazier things have happened. Past 24 rounds, Morikawa and Neesmith. Henley's still there, actually. Keegan Bradley, Dustin Johns. All right, Russell Henley, you're on the short list. Tringali is up there inside the top 10. My guy Norlander, when we get to my DraftKings review, uh, not the best at Bay Hill, but again, at a shorter course, maybe this could 
proved to be pretty good for him. You know, Swedes have played well here. We got a Norin top 10 out of it before. Stenson obviously has won this event. Players' Championship, he has never played in this event in the past. And before Bay Hill, he did make the cut at Bay Hill, granted. Uh, before that, though, the approaches were looking really good. Hmm. And tends to putt better on Bermuda. That is not obviously the case at Bay Hill, but another one. I'm trying to find the back end guys because honestly, the top end guys, pick your poison. <laughs> Uh, if you have a lean on someone like I like Cantlay and I like Webb, does that really distinguish them from any of the other top end players? Not really. Uh, you can like whoever you want. I like Rom, just you know, gut feeling like Rom, but that doesn't mean that Dustin won't beat him by 500 strokes, or it could go the other way. You never know with this type of thing with so much water at the top end. You can ride the form all you want, but if the best players decide that they're going to be great that weekend, they're probably going to be at the very top of the leaderboard. Where is the Players' Championship? Do I have it under, like, TPC Sawgrass or something stupid like that? Or the player? I do have it under the players. Even all caps. Needs work. Yeah, because it never fucking works because the players is stupid. How did this look for me? Okay, approach weighted 30%. Okay, that's good. Ball striking, 10% for the modeling this is as I go through it. Uh, around the green, 20%. Let's lower that significantly. Let's drop that back down to, you know what? Let's get rid of around the green. And let's get rid of putting. So I had that weighted 25%. I must not have updated this in ages. Let's just change it to strokes gain short game, which combines around the green and putting. And we'll set that to 10%. Par 4s, 450 to 500. That's on there. Par 4s in general, uh, 10%. Eagle rate, I actually have up at 5%. Instead of having, do I have par 5 scoring on there? I do. I'm going to get rid of par 5 scoring. We'll try to find something else fun to throw in that probably doesn't make a difference. But eagle rate on these par fives, you can make eagles on three of these par fives. On 16, 2, and 11, they're up for grabs. So if you have guys that can generate eagle opportunities, I wish we had... I'm going to bump up opportunities gained to 10%. Opportunities gained, if you're new to this, is a fantasy national stat, which measures greens in and under regulation, fringe included, uh, 20 feet and in, uh, which we call a birdie putt. Fairways gained at 5%. What do I have left over here? I have an extra 15% to play around with. Fun! I'm going to bump up fairways gained to 10%. And I'm just going to try to mitigate that a little bit by throwing in off the tee at 5%. So we're at 95%. Ah, let's just jack up approach to 35% and see what this spits us out. I always try to move these around throughout the course of the week uh, and try to figure everything out. And obviously you can just find what you want for your custom stat model. But this is going to be over the past 24 rounds, uh, a decent sample of what we have so far into 2021 and see what the numbers tell us. Who am I guessing at number one? It's Colin Morikawa at number one, $9,400. I don't even know if he's going to get a lot of love here in terms of DraftKings ownership, not to say he's like a 2% or he's probably like 12%, but even though Hovland had a bad Saturday at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, I could still see him being higher, which, I mean, it's not crazy because Hovland is excellent, but it's going to be one of those things where Morikawa wins these events and Hovland doesn't. <laughs> Uh, and he'll probably be more owned than Morikawa at the same time. So the top 10 in terms of the past 24 rounds, custom stat modeling with the overweight on approach. Morikawa, Dustin Zander still, even though he's only 14th on that. Hovland only 21st on strokes gained approach and still comes in fourth in the situation. Hatton, Henley, Sam Burns, Tony Finau, Matthew Fitzpatrick, and Henrik Norlander is number 10. Uh, these do not include any of the rounds from Arnold Palmer Invitational. Those will be uploaded Monday morning to fantasynational.com if you're wondering. After that, it is Homa, Neesmith, Tringali, JT, Rom, Neiman, Webb Simpson, Corey Connors, Brooks Kepka, and Keegan Bradley, and then the Gim Reaper right after. I bet you he goes up after his um, he and Keegan's amazing Saturdays at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I have no idea what Neiman has ever done at this course in the past, but he should. He's never played it. That would be why. Uh, had a bad Genesis and approach, but other than that, like the guy's good. So both ball striking wise. Do I want to go with Neiman? Neiman's only 7,700. That's a really good price. I just want to kind of look at this. We just sort by salary. We never get a chance to do this when I do this show. But 
I mean, Bryson is, it's funny for a guy who puts so much emphasis into stats, the stats never really love Bryson because what he does kind of breaks the mold of strokes gain. So always keep that in mind. Probably one of the reasons, honestly, that the top guys, you know, you don't see a ton of top finishes from because the fairways gain numbers are super low when it comes down to it. They're all in the bottom half. Uh, it's because they hit the ball so far. When you start forcing guys to lay up and use irons off the tee, obviously their driving accuracy is going to improve. But you know, sometimes that just means a lot of water balls. Who has the best accuracy of any of these guys? Morikawa in Hovland of anyone, and then Sungjae. Hopefully Sung Jae has a bad Sunday. I don't have anything on him, so I'd like to see him have a bad Sunday. I could get behind Sung Jae here. And Matthew Fitzpatrick would be the other one of the $8,000 and above. Then you have like Scott, Day, and Smith, just bad accuracy drivers of the ball. Louis is kind of in the top end. Then you have Answer, who's in the top 10 in terms of fairways gain. Connor's number one in fairways gain. So they're similar skill sets, in, and they're only separated by $100 in price. But that's not the end-all be-all. That's just you know, a something to point to them to be like, oh, I can see why that would happen. How's my guy Ryan Palmer at this course? How are we doing? Because if I build any like John Rom lineups, I'll probably have to use Ryan Palmer lineups. Players, miscut 23rd, miscut 23rd, miscut 59th, 5th miscut. Huh. It's either all or nothing, it seems. In the years that he comes 23rd, he putts really well. So every other year, Ryan Palmer plays well. So I have to play some Ryan Palmer, John Rahm lineups, it looks like. Lonto, I don't think has ever played the players, but he's riding some good form coming in. Even if when we look back at his Bay Hill stats, uh, the approach has been really good. Didn't have a terrific Saturday playing with Bryson, but you know, you're not expecting Lonto to win at this price point. Uh, he's $7,300. That's a really good number. Could Kevin Na win this event? Hmm. Siwoo. Well, let's just put the check next to Siwoo. Pete Dyke Horse, play Siwoo, Kim. Kuchar, a former winner of this event, another guy who plays well at Pete Dyke Courses, coastal courses. For the first time in ages, he had life on his approaches. Couldn't make a putt to save his life. But that's really encouraging to see him actually hit his iron. The first time he'd gained over a stroke with irons since the U.S. Open, <laughs> and he missed the cut that week in the Northern Trust before that. But old guys, just randoms, Guys with some experience, like again, like I said, it's going to be a really weird week to try to parse through everything. If we get into the six thousand dollar level, who are the first guys that kind of pop up in terms of the stats? Norlander, Neesmith, both pop up. Knox and Moore inside the top thirty of the power rankings. Keegan Bradley is at number twenty. Harold Varner is at thirty three. Peter Malnati, number thirty one. Anyone lower than that really stick out? CT Pan. How's the Panama? Panimal's number 43. Doug Gim's number 21. He's $6,200. That's going to be a popular play this week, especially if he finishes the top 10. I mean, if he wins, it's going to be out of control uh, what his ownership. That would be a pure fade position. Pan, 5.8 strokes gained on approach at the Genesis. Obviously, he played the Masters really well, was inside the top 10. Uh, it's been driving and putting that's really been sinking him. Obviously, not a great Bermuda putter by any stretch, but he has a win at a Pete Dye course. He won the Heritage. Uh, I mean, that was the last like really good result that he had. But if we take a look at his, let's see, players, uh, he's made the cut in both appearances. No good results to speak of, but Heritage 2019, he won there. And then the Wyndham Championship, which I would say is a corollary. Like we, Henrik Stenson has won... I'm just trying to think of the players that won both the Players' Championship and the Wyndham Championship. So you have Stenson, Sergio, Webb Simpson. I think those are just the three. Let's uh, take a look here. If we go to Wiki, Wind, Wind, M Championship. See what pops up for us. I just want to take a look at the past champions at this course. Probably the easiest way to do it. Oh, see, Woo Kim has won both. So, and Snedeker had a top five like two years ago. And CT Pan was second that year with Webb Simpson. Webb Simpson just loves the Wyndham. So you have Stenson has won both. See, Woo Kim has won both. I have no idea if Davis Love has won both. Uh, Sergio has won both. Webb Simpson has won both. All right. Davis Love has actually won it twice. Interesting. Did Parnovic win the Players' Championship? Now I can't even remember. Now we're getting into too crazy of stuff. Davis Love III, did, has he won the Players' Championship? A lot less wins than I would have expected. 
uh pga championship yeah he did win the players championship back in 1992 so there is something with the Wyndham championship i mean they're bermuda grass they're shorter courses uh, a lot of guys have played well at heritage there over the years too but i don't know maybe i'll start with if i just i'm gonna switch off the strokes game and again this show is just me kind of running through how i do my process and what i'm looking at um i don't know if it's like super helpful to anyone but if we look at the Wyndham championship by and large, you can, let's go Sedgefield CC. Some guys will just have no stats from Sedgefield CC because they don't play the Wyndham Championship. But let's just click on that and see who pops up for us. And let's look at 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017. We'll take the past four years of data from the Wyndham Championship and see what it gives us. Yeah, no Dustin, no Rom, no Rory, no Xander. Not shocking. Uh, Brooks has those two rounds when he was hurt last year, so there's a bit of context to some of this stuff. Uh, strokes gain total. Webb Stenson, both winners of the players. Ryan Armour, Billy Horschel, Sung J.M. How has Horschel been here? He had a bad go of it, but I'd be willing to go back to Billy Ho after the nice Mexico Players Championship. Made cut, made cut, missed cut, made cut, made cut, made cut, missed cut. So he's been around, and the putting has been excellent. If he can regain that ball-striking form that we saw two weeks ago, I don't hate Billy Horschel at all. I want to see what his updated stats are going to be. Kevin Na, another good player. Sung J M, another good player at this course. You might just go with, like, the all Wyndham lineup. Just say, screw it. Uh, if we just look at average strokes and do T to green. Herman, it's only four rounds. Herman, Stenson, Hovland, Webb, Moore, Gim. Okay. Kevin Na, Sung J, Sam Burns. In four rounds, had a really nice run. Tita Green going through it. Approach-wise, who is the best player from Sedgefield? Stenson, Herman, Matsuyama, ZJ. If you got to ask, can't afford it. Hovland, Webb Simpson, the Gooch. Tringali, Gim. Gooch is actually having a nice approach week at Bay Hill. Uh, he's just not putting for shit. So Andrew Landry, another one, uh, is a winner at a Pete Dye course at the American Express. How is his? Let's see here. Players Championship has made the cut in both years. That sounds like a first round leader type guy to me. Andrew Landry, 6,100. You're on the list, pal. Ryan Almail, how have you been playing? Not great. Although at the Amex, he was pretty good. He's going to hit every fairway. We know this about Ryan Armour. Not the best putter on Bermuda, but you know that can be okay. He putted well at the Amex and at Sony and at Wampo, which are all Bermuda grass courses. Okay. All right. Maybe Ryan Armour. Might go on the short list. I'm going to throw CT Pan on that short list. Norlander he just pops up here once again. Ben Ann is someone who's been a first round leader, has been in contention at the Wyndham in the past. I don't know if he has like the goods to really come through for you all the way at the Players' Championship. However, 26th, 30th, and a missed cut. And you can see the putting has never really been there, but the off the tee and the approach has been pretty decent for him uh, throughout the years at. TPC Sawgrass. Um, let's go to all courses and look at the past four years. This is going to be the Pete Dye part of this show. And there's a very handy Pete Dye filter down at the bottom. So we're just looking at the past four years and the past 24 rounds at Pete Dye courses. So let's see how we're doing here. The best player, Tita Green, let's say, at Pete Dye courses. Rory, Cantley, DJ, Ryan Moore, Bryson DeChambeau, your top five. Cooch is still up there. Casey, C. Wu, Norin, Patrick Reed, John Rahm ranks 11th tee degree. If we're just looking at strokes gain total, Bryson, Dustin, Webb, Rory, answer. Fleetwood, Cantley, Scott, Day, and Poulter. Keegan Bradley is actually number 11 on that list. Streelman, too, number 12. How is Streelman playing? I know he had Pebble. He always plays well at Pebble. But other than that, how has he been doing? 50 seconds. He's been making cuts. Did not play well at the last Pete Dye course that he played, but Farmers, Phoenix, all right, making cuts. That's all you can kind of ask for when you roster someone like Kevin Streelman. Uh, let's take out 2017 to see if that affects anything over the past 24 rounds. Because maybe someone just had an incredible 2017. I'm looking at you, Jason Day, because it's probably you who sticks up there. Uh, Tita Green, Rory Cantley, Dustin Moore, Cooch, still. Cooch only has 12 rounds over those three years. Where are they coming from? They're coming from two from the players, one from the Heritage. Okay. Pretty good. 
tell you the truth, the short game hasn't been great, but off the tee, very positive. Approach, very positive. Maybe he, like I said, maybe he found something at the concession. Heard the saying. Ben Ann, Scott Piercy, Shez Reevy, Neiman and Bradley are still up there. Fleetwood goes down a little bit. Uh, C. Wu and Justin Thomas move up a little bit. Answer still number 11 uh, as we parse out these stats. So this, these are the kind of like details that I'm searching for this week for Pete Dye courses and just trying to predict my players overall. Uh, it's going to be tough. Like I said, you're going to have guys that are absolute landmines. You just hope to avoid the really, really bad ones and hopefully be on your way. Let's go to my, actually, let's just scan the betting odds for a second to see who else is down there. Henley at 100, like that. Who was the other one? Answer, I like that. Where's old C. Wu? Where are they giving us the Wu man this week? Lee Westwood, Gary Woodland, Tommy Fleetwood. C. Wu Kim, 80 to 1. Yeah, I'll probably just bet it to bet it because I, Moen Uri, after just, you know, being kind of chalky, playing so well, did not play well at Bay Hill. You could probably go back to him here. He used to have an excellent time every time he played at the players. Last year was just kind of a write off for him. Even the year before that, leading into the Masters, he still played well at the Masters that year. So I don't hate him either. Uh, it's a nice, like, rebound week, and that's where you're going to find your leverage in situations like this. Uh, where is so Webb Simpson's 18 to one Cantley's 22. I'll probably end up betting that 22. I mean, they're just going to fucking give us these Morikawa numbers because Spieth is going to go up either way. That Morikawa might end up being like 33 to one by the time everything opens everywhere else on Monday. I'll probably have to end up betting that. And since I've hit the last three wins for Morikawa, he's officially keeping me in the red when it comes to golf betting, then I'll probably just have to go back to him every single week because he wins that much. He's turning into the new Patrick Reed where just blind bet him and maybe he'll win. And he wins far more often than what his odds actually dictate. My DK lineup this week, uh, not great, Bob. Cameron Davis really let me down. So we have, as you can see here, Tyrrell Hatton. Matthew Fitzpatrick, Cameron Davis, miscut. He had a six-foot eagle putt on 16 to make the cut on Friday. He missed said putt, so he needed a birdie on 17 or 18 in order to make the cut, and immediately bogeyed 17, and he was done. So thanks for nothing, Cam Davis. Uh, Cameron Tringali, Alex Noren, and Norlander is really the big miss here. Uh, out of 416 entries, I'm currently 179th with a five of six. Uh, there's a bunch of guys ahead of me who have only uh, four of six through. There's a couple of six of sixes back there, but I don't think there's any six of sixes behind me, which is always nice. So I'm in the top, just above the top half. Should have been playing 50 50s this entire time. I'm well out of the money right now. Hey, there's Osimo. Maybe he can make the money to Empire Maker. He's up there. Actually, what is it, the top? How many positions end up paying in this? 60 bucks. That's weird. Anyway, oh, there we go. Uh, there's a whole bunch of splits down there. So it looks like the top 90 end up paying. So I'm going to have to double my position um, by the time we get through. But a lot of that is predicated. I have no one better than T11 right now that if Hatton or Fitzpatrick want to go on a run and Norn doesn't give everything back on the final hole of the day and I get anything out of Norlander, you know, I might scrape by with a bottom end finish so pat mayo's donation in the uh the 200 dollars single single entry continues to be a uh, very profitable for everyone else minus 1200 good good for me doing well fortunately these shows make like ad revenue so i can afford to play in these things but maybe i'll have to reassess my strategy here a little bit i'm trying to think of what else i i shouldn't have been a coward honestly i talked about this on the wednesday show when i did the live chat i spoke about it with raza on the DraftKings show i talked myself into spieth all week i used him in one and done so maybe you can go and get me a win in that but i didn't bet him I didn't play him in my, I played him on DraftKings, but I didn't play him in a single entry. And I had really talked myself into him. And that's really the difference right now. If I had used, because I was going to use Hatton. I, I really liked Hatton a lot this week. But if I had just used Spieth instead of Fitzpatrick or tried to finagle away around, I used too much read across my lines. So I could have just used more Spieth or figured out a way to get up to Bryson. And it's funny, I talked about Matt Jones's article on the Wednesday show talking about the leverage you can uh, derive from the very top end on DraftKings, where. You just look for the lower owned guy and the guys above $10,000 are generally all equal in terms of their floor and upside situation. We had identified Bryson as being the lowest owned of that top end. And I know he was expensive, but he had the course history and he's Bryson. He's an excellent player. He's one of the best players in the world. And I looked at it and 
I even said it. I'm like, I'm playing cowardly. Like, the move is to play Bryson in this situation. I just don't have the guts to do it. I don't like the way my rosters look with it. Well, my rosters fucking sucked anyway. Um, you know, because I played Cam Percy. Miscut. Seb Straka. Miscut. The guys in the sixth were fucking horrendous outside of Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell was good. Munoz made the cut at least. And who was the other jabroni I had going? Completely forget now. Yeah, I think it was Keith Mitchell. Great. Uh, Matt Wallace at 6900 bucks is the guy that I'm looking for in this spot. But all those guys flamed out anyway. So they, it's not like my decisions really impacted me too much down there. That, But we had Bryson projected at like 12%. And I think that's where he ended up coming in. Like that's a really good ownership level considering everyone else around him was so highly owned that you really have to stick to it. And listen, I get wiped out at the players every single year on DraftKings anyway. I don't think I've ever won a cent on DraftKings at the players that I think I'm just going to make the most random lineups possible. Be like, here are the guys that I identify as being good plays and then just pick the guys right above them instead and just roll my lineups like that. And hopefully throwing shit against the wall ends up working a little bit better for me. But we're going to break this down. We're going to talk it through. And I bet you by the time Wednesday comes along, I'm going to feel really good about my lineups. And then... Friday's going to happen. I'm just, you're going to see me live on the cut sweat show. I'm going to be like smoking at the desk being like, what the fuck went wrong? I'm not playing any to make the cut parlays, anything crazy like that. It's just, it's too, you're probably better off to play a two miss the cut parlay at the players. Cause huge names. And I might take the top six guys on the board. They'll all be like plus 500, play like a round Robin three person to miss the cut parlay with those six guys and see how that works out. That might actually be a play this week for me. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope just talking through this and my crazy inner monologue helped you find something. I, people every week tell me. They say, everyone says, people tell me all the time that, Pat, you walk through it, you show your stuff, your picks, and your research is stupid, but I saw something on the screen or something you said that ignited something in my mind. Then I went to fantasynational.com slash mayo for that 20% discount, and I found something doing it through the mixed condition model or my modeling. So I hope this sort of service helps you in some kind of way, even if the picks may be subpar a lot of the time. Uh, once again, you can enter that draw for 100 bucks. Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets. Please hit the description, subscribe to it, help out the Mayo Media Network. The more stuff like this is great. It means that... You know, more people are getting paid. Uh, producers are getting work. More people are getting a chance to show themselves on air. Like this is, you know, it's really great for the network and with support. And you guys have been so generous with your support so far that you know it makes me feel bad asking, but at the same time, I don't care. Uh, I will continue to ask for your support on all this stuff, and I really do appreciate when you support the show. So hopefully we can get some more money in the kitty. Maybe I can win one of these events, make it like 300 bucks for three people in order to do it. But at this point where I'm losing so much money, uh, right now it's 100 bucks for that. There are more giveaways to come throughout the week for the Players' Championship though. Anyway, smash the like on the way out. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!